Jens, any news from your meeting with anti-fascistische action? Mostly that they don't appreciate us working with the bourgeoisie fascists of the Iron Front. <sighs> I don't agree with the Iron Front's anti-communist stance. But I still see the value of working with them to combat these fucking Nazis. We all want the same things. <sighs> Do you think if you met with them again and gave them... a display of your vampiric nature, they might be more amenable to working with us? You... you want me to eat someone? What? No! Jesus Christ, Jens. We're trying to work with them. Why would they work with us after you ate someone in front of them? I, I don't know. You said... You show them your red eyes. Pick up something too heavy for a human to lift. Use your vampiric speed. Oh. Right. Yeah. Leave now, Jens. Oh! Yeah. Sorry. Uh, y yes, Mom. I I'll see if I can meet with them now. Ah, Miss Judith. Yes? We have some things you might like to see. <sighs> you can't walk them over here to my desk. I'm working on something. N no, ma'am. They're too big. Well, that certainly piques my interest. What do we have here? How delightful. I love when you liberate stolen art from Nazis. Is this an El Greco? I believe so. Look, we found one of you. Oh, there I am. What's this? Botticelli? Yes, not one of my favorites, but better than the ones who depict me beheading a man in the nude. Go put it with the others. Oui, mum. What? Uh, what's this? That's the reason I asked you to come over. We found it in the Nazi lieutenant's house. Did you kill everyone in the home? Aye. Good. Was this with the art? Yes, Mum. We found it in the safe in its basement. There weren't any other scrolls there. We opened it very carefully so we could study it, figure out uh, where it needs to go when the war is over. I don't know what language it's in, but maybe we Greek. Could... What? Koine Greek. It's a prophecy. You can eat it. Yes. And I think this may also be about me. How so? Because it describes a figure called the Kingslayer. And their goals sound an awful lot like mine. It was the morning of Dawn, Sonny, and Leonard's departure. Dawn wished she was more well-rested for this endeavor, but she'd been up all night talking with Viv and Kyle, figuring out how to get to a hell dimension. This was the least prepared Dawn had been to do anything in her life, but she knew she had to. Rita would do the same. She and Sonny packed their backpacks, and Keegan sat at the kitchen table. So, how does this all work? How do I send you to hell? All you'll have to do is press the space bar. Ah! Keegan Flynn. <sighs> Nothing happened. Oh, that was your middle name she used, wasn't it? You're in trouble! Why would you press that? I, I wanted to see what it did. It could have sent us all to hell. Well, I figured it wouldn't, since none of you are in this salt circle on the floor. I, I don't know. I, I thought it would at least make some sort of magic sound. Magic sound? What are you talking about? Yeah, y'all haven't noticed that magic shit tends to make these weird sounds, like... Or, a... or like when Rita teleports or makes something from nothing and it just goes... <laughs> and when Jaxi teleports, there's a little fart along with it? Yeah! Huh. Yeah, I guess. 
Anyway, stop touching stuff. <sighs> okay, but really, how is this going to work? Are those jumper cables? Yes. We're going to jumpstart the scythe. Sort of. What's all this business on your laptop? Oh my god. I've m hacked? Yeah, yeah, that's the most accurate verb. I hacked into the scythe. This is a list of the past few jobs it's done. It holds souls, gets full, sends souls places. I figured it had to log those functions somehow. Can I ask a question, or are you going to get bitchy with me again? I was not bitchy. So no, no questions. Uh... I'm sorry, but I'm really fucking stressed and scared, and I'm about to have a fucking meltdown. All your questions just feel like more demands on my brain, even if they are benign. What was your question? Sorry. What are those weird symbols on this window that doesn't look like any language I know? Uh, that's the celestial nonsense that the scythe's code is written in. Kyle's contribution was translating that for me and Viv. If you look at the side that's been translated, you can see that the last thing the scythe did... It sent someone to hell? Yeah. I think Judith must have been too powerful a demonic energy to just get turned into roaches or something. So when I press the space bar, I'm guessing if you're holding the scythe, it'll tell the scythe to repeat the last thing it did? Well, that's sort of the idea. I don't know if it's going to send us where it sent Rita or where it sent Judith. We stabbed Judith, and it looks like killing things is a completely different program on the scythe versus the reaping part. It will either send us where Rita went, because it sees this as reaping someone, or it will repeat the last thing it did, send Judith to hell. Hopefully without setting any of us on fire. I'm sorry. I was not aware there was a chance I could be immolated. Can I not just pop to wherever you go on my own? You wouldn't know what dimension we'd land in. You'd have to go on a whole journey to find us by yourself. Besides... It probably won't set us on fire, like it did Judith. It's not stabbing us like it did her. Like I said, that's a different function. <laughs> probably won't. Interesting. Is the salt circle to keep us all together? That's the idea. Can I see if you have room for these meds in your bag? I want to make sure I can doctor up you and Leonard should anything uh, happen. I think so. You can try to squish it in there. Gotcha. Keegan, are you scared for us? What? No, I just... <laughs> I just want to know what you're asking me to do. Can I hug you? If you want, sure. I mean... Oh, oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that everyone comes back in one piece. I trust you to help the Grove and the workshop find a way to get us back. Please keep my Aunt Sunny safe. I'll do everything I can. I promise. I believe I've finished packing. Uh, thank you for letting me borrow so much. Are you sure you're all right with me taking this charming bag to hell? The dick-shaped backpack? Yeah, that's Rita's. She got it at the Phallus Palace. She'd want you to use it. All right, the meds fit. Oh, I think I'm ready, too. <sighs> okay, I guess this is it. I promise. I'll get my grove and the workshop working together to close rifts here and figuring out how to get y'all back home. We'll try to keep things patched together while you're gone, and I'll take care... And I'll take great care of Jaxie. Oh, goodness. What was that, dear Buppy? Uh, I believe Blood Mommy was concerned for your safety. That's why she made the difficult choice to leave you here with Keegan. Keegan is a very smart and kind young man. I'm sure you'll find his company to your liking. <laughs> you wouldn't dare. He wouldn't dare what? He has threatened to begin a hunger strike should you leave him here. Oh, Jaxi, sweetheart. We already lost tall mommy. I couldn't bear to lose you. It's going to be dangerous. I don't want anything bad to happen to you, baby. I promise. Keegan will take good care of you. <laughs> oh. What's he saying? He says he's the strongest boy in the world. Keegan? <laughs> oh, 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 goodness. Definitely not Keegan. <laughs> he was talking about himself. 
He called Keegan a twink and said he could kick his ass. Taxi. <laughs> That's not very nice. Fair uh, enough, little dude. He said he's even stronger when he's in hell. Uh, Jaxie, what do you mean by that? <laughs> oh, interesting. All right, my best translation. He's more dog than demon here on Earth. In hell, he seems to be more hell than hound. Uh, does that make sense? <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Oh, dear boy. What did he say? He said, uh, please, mommy, I want to take care of you. Okay. All right, you can come. <coughs> oh. uh, where'd he go? I think he went to pack for the trip. What do you bring him, baby? Your rope toy and the, the tiny shirt that Rita made for you? She made him a shirt? Yeah. Oh my god. Littlest buddy. Let's let's get your stuff in the backpack. Okay. Whew. Now that Jaxie has everything he needs, Keegan. I know, I know. Use the dildo to summon Master Leonard every six hours, then I can give him supplies to take back to you and blood for you and I guess now Jaxie too. I'll coordinate with Viv and Oh 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 we're hugging again. Okay. I love you. I'm so proud of you. And I know you've got everything under control. I love you too. And thanks. But you're gonna be fine. Stop acting like you're never gonna see me again. We may not, Keegan. We don't have a way back. Everyone at the Grove and the workshop will be working on it. That many witches putting their heads together? We'll figure it out. Okay. You ready, Donnie? Leonard? Ready! Did everyone use the bathroom? I don't pee. Yes! I used each of the facilities! Oh! Oh my! What? Um, well, Jaxie also used the bathroom, but he did so in the kitchen. Jaxie! <sighs> I'll clean it up after y'all leave. Oh, thank you, sweetie. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, I've got the scythe. The jumper cables are connected to the collar. The collar is connected to my laptop. And I press the space bar to send you to hell. Yep. I've just spent the last several months trying not to go to hell, and I'm going there of my own free will now. <laughs> okay. I'll be fine. I'll see you soon. Okay. Everyone put a hand on the scythe. Oh, wait. Jaxie doesn't have hands. Um... Jaxie, I'm going to zip you up in my jacket, okay? Do you think that'll be enough to make sure he comes with us? That should be good. <laughs> okay. Now are we ready? Yes! Ready. <sighs> okay, Keegan, count of three. One. One and a half. Two. Three. I'll see you soon. I love you. I'll be okay. With a flash of light and the big magic sound Keegan had been wanting to hear earlier, they were gone. The scythe disappeared with dawn, leaving the jumper cables that were clipped to the blade to fall to the ground, and Keegan was left alone. Please be okay. really stepped in it this time, Debbie. Hey! My eyes are down here. I was looking at your eyes. Sure you were. Incredible. Astaroth is right. You really stepped in it. Oh, and how is any of that my gosh darn fault? You were assigned to Rita. And she's not a problem anymore. Who knew Reapers could die, huh? That's the thing, Debbie. After searching through Kyle's files after his disappearance. We're not sure Rita was a reaper at all. Uh, what now? It seems as though she might have been a creation of Kyle's. Oh, like, like an art project? 
If she wasn't an art project, he needs practice. <laughs> like a daughter, Debbie. Oh. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. They were a lot alike, you know. You're telling me she was a demigod? Yes. Did Kyle mess up making her or something? Why was she like that? No idea. The only thing we know is that you fucked up big time. How the heck did I fudge anything up? You were assigned to Rita. How are we finding this out now? Does it matter one iota? She's dead. A reaper may be easily destroyed, but what do you think would happen to a demigod who died? One who is quite literally made by death. Man alive, are you telling me that Gumby-shaped pervert is alive and well somewhere? Yes. We could have been prepared for this if you'd observed her more closely. You continually underestimated her. You didn't know she was a demigod either. But we weren't assigned to her. And when the higher-ups look for someone to blame for all the chaos Rita is causing, it's your name on the paperwork. What? You're throwing me under the bus? What chaos is Rita causing? Calm down, Debbie. You're being incredibly unprofessional. Is it like if you can't make inappropriate sexual remarks, you become belligerent? You just told me that the higher-ups see this as my fault. Oh, they don't yet. But they will if you don't get this fixed fast. She's staring at my dicks again. Debbie. You have two on your face. Where the fudge am I supposed to look? Their eyes. Their eyes are right below two of their... their... wieners. Wiener. Wiener. Debbie. Really? Grow up. Can we stop talking about me and get back on topic? Yes, Debbie. I really thought you'd be easier to talk to after the third time we sent you to HR for this. Oh. Can we talk about the chaos Rita is causing now? Yes. My deepest apologies for Deborah. Oh, it's not your fault, Uriel. I know, but we're both angels and I feel some sense of responsibility to- No, no, you don't blame me for all demons, do you? Of course not. Then save your sorries for a rainy day, my friend. You are such a sweetheart. No, but you're Are we just... gonna talk about what Rita's been doing? Oh my god. Debbie. You can't stand it when the conversation isn't about you, can you? Oh. You really are a piece of work. I'm sorry. Huh, okay, sure you are. Anyway, I think it might be more helpful if I give you a visual of what chaos Rita's been causing. We got this CCTV video sent to us by the head of security for a recently murdered demon king. Oh, which one? Anyone I'm familiar with? The demon king, Ron Johnson. Oh, the king of vitriol? Oh, that's a shame. Your incompetence caused his death. Oh, well, that's a big accusation. Just watch the video. I hope you can stop staring at my dicks long enough to watch the screen, Debbie. <clears throat> Where is the DMV transporter your boss got from Stinky Derek? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Ask him. He, he wanted to be able to go to Earth to... <laughs> to uh. I killed him. You're out of a job. Where would he keep it? You... you killed him? Yeah. He went down a lot easier than the other demon lord chodes we've been killing. Your boss was a little titty, baby. Where is the fucking DMB transporter? Yeah! Please, please, not the way back I, I don't know. I don't know where it is. I gave it to him after I picked it up from Stinky Derek. And I, I went back to work. I, uh, I... Oh, oh God. Oh, you... The Kingslayer? <sighs> no, that's my sister. But you, you just said you, you killed a lot of demon rulers. Yes. Well, by kings. Yeah, a few. M meaning they were 
slain? Yes, okay, but I'm not the Kingslayer. Like, you do something nine or... Wait. Okay, you do something a dozen times. It doesn't mean that's your thing now. If you're gonna give me a title, it makes more sense that it's something like the Pussy Pounder or the Accidental Soap Eater. Accidental Soap Eater? They really have to stop making hand soap shaped like food. Like what? Little fruit shaped ones? No, those are never the right colors to confuse me. I think the ones that look like bars of white chocolate get me the most. So you keep taking bites of white bars of soap? Okay, okay, you're making me sound a lot sillier than I actually am. You know it's those soaps where- th <laughs> God damn it! Why did you kill them? They died thinking I'm some soap-eating weirdo! You are a soap-eating weirdo. They set off a silent alarm. Security is coming. Damn, I didn't notice that. You wouldn't. It's silent. Did you find the transporter? Got it. Let's head out. That was... Carmilla? She's traveling with Carmilla? I believe she's going by Millie. That is the demigod that Carmilla was before she was turned. We already knew that Kyle had made her. That's part of why he was forced to work at the DMV. Now that we know he also made Rita, you can see why them traveling through hell dimensions together poses a fucking problem. We think they're going to use the old DMV transporter to find more demon kings to kill. You aren't saying that Rita is the Kingslayer, right? What do you know about that? What do you heard? What do you know about the Kingslayer? I I don't know a lot. The, that Sybil was yammering about a Kingslayer before I killed her. Hmm. Yeah, you killed an endangered species. Have you done the paperwork for that yet? You're probably going to be written up. Oh, she was helping Kyle escape. And she was likely the last of her kind. Where's the paperwork for that? I don't know. I don't think we've needed it since... Since Amanda killed off the last leprechaun. <laughs> yeah, that's been a while, huh? Is anyone gonna tell me about this Kingslayer, huh? God forbid we talk amongst ourselves in front of Debbie for a single second. You have our attention now, Debbie. Is this what you wanted? You called me into this gosh darn meeting. Whoa, what an attitude. Whoa, whoa, chill out. <sighs> Please, I just need this information to do my job. Do your job? That would be something new for you. <laughs> You're so bad. <laughs> <laughs> there are several translations of what is commonly described as a king slayer. There are some common themes to all translations of the prophecy. They will kill the kings of hell. They are an agent of death. Which is often described as a killer of men. Yes, that's true. Some translations are closer to that, and we're still not clear on if men means that gender exclusively, or if it refers to mankind. The Kingslayer is described as the progeny of the ancient one. Or Child of the First. A lot of different translations there. Hmm. And the Kingslayer is described with feminine pronouns in each translation. What does she prophesize to do? Dismantle the ruling class of the underworld, taking all their power and spreading unbridled chaos through all dimensions. Well, gosh. That's no good. Yeah, no shit. Hey, I know she is frustrating, but we're still at work. Ugh. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my language. I should have said, yeah, obviously. That, that could also be describing Carmilla, right? I don't think Rita is a killer of man. Didn't you hear the fucking video? She killed a dozen kings of hell. And she was disguised as a reaper for millennia. Oh, Reapers don't kill people, though. Oh my god. Mmm, you're really splitting hairs. Humans don't know the ins and outs of what a Reaper does. It could be Carmilla. It could be Rita. It could even be Judith. Judith is there, too? Not in the same dimension. God, you really need to catch up on your memos. 
We had Ricky leave you a memo about it on your desk. Oh, gosh. Oh, when? I, I didn't see it. Like, ten minutes ago. But I've been here for the past twenty minutes. You really always have an excuse for everything. You need to clean up your mess. How is this my mess? You were in charge of Rita for years. You tortured her in hell after she got caught cheating to get lucky winners. In all that time, you never picked up that she was something other than a reaper. When we talk to the higher-ups, we can either tell them that Debbie stopped the prophecy of the Kingslayer from coming to pass, or we can make this all your fault when the shit hits the fan later. I'm your scapegoat for this? You're trying to pin all this on me? This is the biggest That's quite heap enough of, of that, Debbie. I've ever heard We're sending you to HR to get written up for making life. Sybils extinct. I ought to... <sighs> I hate having to talk to Debbie. Honestly, I don't know how she's still working here. It's like she doesn't know what's appropriate for the workplace. And she never learns. Well, that's over now. She's HR's problem. You want to make out on the conference table a little bit? Hmm. Yeah. My lunch break is soon anyway. Sweet. Oh, my dicks. <laughs> You really didn't need to come with me. What else am I gonna do? Hang out in a warehouse full of Clarisonics? Hmm, fair enough. Who are we looking for? The person with the DMV transporter works at a bar? Doesn't work here. Merely frequents the place. We're looking for- Ladies! You gotta order or get the fuck out. Oh, my deepest apologies, barkeep. You know, you're not wrong that we're both ladies, but you should really get out of that habit of needlessly gendering people you don't know. You've likely misgendered a lot of people doing that. I... I think you've made them mad. You know... That's a really excellent point you make. That's a bad habit of mine. I need to work on it. Thank you for taking the time to explain that to me. Oh. Thank you so much for being receptive to that. So many people take being called in as a personal attack. No, not at all. I appreciate you. You're a real peach. Now listen, you are real, sweetheart. But if my boss comes out of the back and sees two people at the bar without drinks, he's gonna be up my ass. I totally understand. Millie, do we have money? <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, hmm. well, we seem to be at an overpass. Impasse. Hey, shut up. Hmm, okay. I have an idea. <laughs> Spicy water! It's what? Sparkling water. Ooh, a tangerine. Boss got these in a trade with someone who had a bunch of shit from Earth. They've been sitting in the back of the fridge for ages. Why? Nobody here fucking likes them. That's why you're getting them for free. If my boss asks, you paid for them. This way you can hang out. And I'm not going to get my ass handed to me for giving you free liquor or bile. A <laughs> uh, bile? Musk demon bile. It's got an aromatic finish. I hear it's like a beer they have on Earth. Uh, IPA? Enthralling. Thank you so much. You are really a sweetheart. So, what the fuck are a couple of humans doing here in vitriol? Not really human. Only part human. Part human, part what? Border Collie. <laughs> Never heard of that demon. Very smart. Very cute. I could tell that much already. <laughs> oh, you flirt. <laughs> uh, uh, this spicy water is vile. It is, right? Pretend to like it, Millie. You're being rude. Why does it feel as though it's attacking me? In my mouth. Well, that's carbonation. Why do humans love carbonation so much? I don't fucking know. It's fun! 
I can't even pretend to enjoy this. Barkeep, we're looking for someone. Who are you looking for? A demon named Derek. He's a purveyor of magical goods. <laughs> oh yeah! Stinky Derek is at the booth in the corner over there. He is here all the time. Stinky Derek? Yeah, we use that to differentiate between him and Horny Derek, who's at the bar over here. Hello. Hi, Horny Derek. Rita, come on. We must speak with Stinky Derek. Thanks for all your help. No problem. Good luck with the... Ugh. Why Ugh. did you take another sip of spicy water if you hated it? Uh, I... I thought I'd give it one more chance, since I would no longer be surprised by the combination. You don't look good. Yeah, it feels like my mouth is sweating. Oh, no. Oh, what? You're about to barf. Oh, I... I haven't done that since before I was turned. Let me grab a bucket. I can just run her to the bathroom. No, some demons love human barf. I can sell that. Oh, not a human. Ew. Oh. It's oh. me. I love human barf. You shut the fuck up, Horty Derek. My sister feels yucky. Not a human. No, oh, my shoes. Yes. That's enough, Horty Derek. You stay back. Hi, you've reached the housekeeping section, and it might be the housekeeping section of today's lucky winner, and it might be the housekeeping section of Info Dumpies, because I am recording a housekeeping section far in advance, because we are going to be moving, and I want to be able to have all of these episodes still coming out while we're moving, but I also do need to pack up things in my recording center station in my room, and I don't want to record bad audio for y'all, so... This housekeeping section is going to be the same for probably a couple of months. I usually like to wait to record these until closer to the episode uh, because I want our Patreon shoutout people to be up to date and accurate. But I think y'all understand that you'll get more episodes this way and we don't have to pause anything to make you wait longer. And as soon as I'm able to record these closer to the date, um, I'm going to start doing that again. But in the meantime, here's the housekeeping section for a show. So if you like the episode of whatever show you're listening to at the moment, uh, check out the episode details to find everyone's social media handles. You can find Mixnomer on uh, Instagram at the handle Mixnomer Productions. If you're listening to today's lucky winner, all of the cast have their social media handles in the episode details so you can see what we're doing on the interwebs. Um, and if you want to support us, the best way you can do that is by sharing about the show. We don't pay for ads, and we don't take paid ads, so you sharing the show is the way we grow. Like, word of mouth is the way we grow uh, any of our shows. So if you want to tell someone in your Discord server, in your subreddit, in the grocery store, I don't know, anywhere, you tell someone about it. It helps us out a lot. If you are in a place to help us monetarily, you can find a link to our Patreon for Mix Nelmer in the show details. So when you become a Patreon subscriber, you are subscribing to get content for any and all shows we make in perpetuity, uh, and you get to support everything we do. It gets split among our cast members because we do profit sharing and we try to make sure that everyone essentially gets the same hourly rate for their work. So when you become a Patreon supporter, starting at the $1 level, you can get access to our Discord server, where we do things like streams where we play Jackbox games, streams where you watch me and Violet play a video game together, I do body doubling, I started doing like a little stitch and bitch hour where we do uh, different fiber arts and we just chat. It's like a virtual knitting circle. It's very fun. But when you do that, it's just at the dollar level. You get access to all of that. And then at higher levels, you get access to things like music from Today's Lucky Winner and live recordings of our Today's Lucky Winner episodes and all of the notes from me and Violet and our guests 
that they make for uh, info dumpies episodes that have a bunch of links so you can go learn more about a subject that you heard on an episode of info dumpies. There's lots of cool stuff. And when you support us on Patreon at certain levels, you can also get a cool shout out like our friends Randy Lovings, Rachel Rachelson, Sewing Seraph, B. Trossler, Smurdy Singh, Helen Clifford, M. Mosin, Lucy, and Nicole Valdivieso. And if you haven't yet, it would be really helpful for us if you left a rating and a nice review to let people know that you liked our shows. Um, It helps us get higher in recommendations and on different charts and get recommended to more people. Um, Subscribing also does that and it costs you nothing and that helps us out a lot. So if you would like to support us in another way, that's another way you can help us out. But yeah, hopefully I will be having my recording set up at our new house when we get moved to, we're moving from Texas to Minneapolis, so that's going to be a big change. Um, But once we get settled in Minneapolis and I have my recording station set up, these housekeeping sections will be bespoke per episode of show again, I promise. I feel bad cutting corners and I feel bad that there's some people who might, um, who might join our Patreon between now and then, who might not get their shout-out immediately, but again, I would rather get you shows in a timely manner than worry about that too much. I'm trying to not let my perfectionism take over. But that's all I got for you, little buddies. Um, God, if you listen to Info Dumpies and you don't listen to today's lucky winner calling you little buddies, it sounds condescending, um, but I promise it's not. But that's all I got for you now, little buddies. Until next time, Try not to die. And if you're an Info Dumpies listener and you don't listen to today's lucky winner, um, my ending is... That's my ending. Okay, sorry.